Well, our next guest is the chief historian at Malatu Taonga, Ministry for Culture and Heritage, where he leads the content team responsible for the NZ History and Te Ara websites. Here to tell us more about his new book, Today in New Zealand History, please welcome to the cafe, Neil Atkinson. Yes, <laughs> great to have you here, Neil. I'll just be having a browse through mm. this. So how did it come about? Well, we've had a lot, we've had a Today in History calendar on our NZ History website for quite a few years, and it's always been one of the most popular um, features of that. I and mean, we had the idea, and actually the publisher we worked with, Exile Publishing, um, had the idea that we could turn this into a book. Um, we thought that was a great idea. So, you know, we, we went about um, kind of selecting the events that we'd put it, we'd have in, and of course they had to be really short. And we, you know, what we're really trying to do is um, convey the, the kind of richness and diversity of New Zealand history and the sort of drama, and hopefully just to really entice people to want to know more. Yeah. What are some of the key areas? Because I know we've got huge resources mm. here in the country and they've all been locked away, so you've been <laughs> managing to get them for us and decide which yeah. key moments of history deserve to be in this book. Yeah, so I mean, we're covering all the, you know, the, big, the big ones that people would expect to be in there. Of course, the Treaty of Waitangi and the land is at Gallipoli, and, and we know those days, you know, 6th of February and 25th of April, they've become part of our kind of national, mm. national story. But there's so much more, of course, it's much, much, much less well known. And um, now, Women's Suffrage Day, we just had that last week. 19th yeah. September, mm. next year's the 125th anniversary. Um, we've got other more sort of unsettling moments like Parihaka on Guy Fawkes Day, 1881, when the, the right. government invades mm. the Maori pacifist community in Taranaki. Um, so a whole mixture of things, you know, there's sort of triumphs and there's, there's some tragedies, of course there's, the, there's earthquakes and there's um, things like the Tangiwai rail disaster in the Wahine. Yeah. And that, <laughs> Um, coming up to the 50th anniversary next year. So, Gosh, that long ago. Mm. It, it's interesting too because you've done it, well, I mean, I, I hate the term, but this is what you've done. It's snackable content, isn't mm. it? It's that short, sort of sharp little bites of things to get people intrigued. Yeah, yeah, and we can cover a huge range of topics in this sort of format, you know. It's got its limitations, but it's a great way to get people, you know, kind of interested in history and wanting to know more. Yeah. And when you were putting this book together, is there any anything that stood out for you and you thought, geez, I'll got to make sure this is in the book because I want the rest of the country and the world to know more about this. Yeah, I mean, there's quite there's, there's a lot of things, really. I mean, one, one story that I think is a really, really nice sort of poignant one is um, on the 1st of November 1944, New Zealand welcomed 800 Polish refugees from, you know, from war torn Europe, 700 orphan children from Poland. And wow. um, they landed in Wellington. The idea was after the war they'd, they'd go home, but that didn't really happen, so most of them stayed here. And there's, there's these sort of slightly awkward photos of the very elderly Prime Minister Peter Fraser cuddling these quite bewildered little Polish children on the wharf in Wellington. So. Nice. I just looked at my birthday because that's what you do with this sort of book. Because yes. it is a calendar mm. on my birthday. Well, on the date of my birthday, I wasn't born then. Uh, New Zealand adopts decimal currency. Yeah, and that was the 50th anniversary this year. Yeah. 10th of July. Mm. Well, there you go. And how do you know when you're doing the birthday boxes, who's born on that day, how do you quantify who you put in there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we, we also decided to put in some of the, you know, born in this day, little boxes in the margins that, and they're, they're some of the more famous people in, in New Zealand, like, you know, like Hillary and, you know, um, it's, yeah, so, we, you know, we, they were quite limited in what we could put in there, right. so, you know, we were just trying to get a, to get a range of New Zealanders as well. And some fun, quirky, bizarre things mm. you've noticed putting this book yeah, together? Yeah, well, actually, one that's um, coming up tomorrow, um, 29th September, 70 years ago, um, a beer boycott in Greymouth, pretty, you know, pretty shocking news. So the, the pubs in Greymouth um, tried to put their prices up. <laughs> The working man of well, that Greymouth wouldn't have gone, was, that not, wouldn't have gone well. <laughs> was not standing for it. And they actually boycotted all the pubs, except one, which was didn't put the price up. They were very popular. And the, and the pubs caved, caved in in the end. And there's another nice one. In, um, <laughs> also, it's Anna Stout's <laughs> birthday it. too. Anna yeah. Stout. Anna Stout. Stout and the beer thing. There Get you that? Go. Yeah, yeah. Nice, nice. nice. Yeah. Another, another nice one in 1937, the farmer's trading company here in Auckland thought it would be a great idea to get a Santa Claus to um, parachute out of a plane over the domain to hand out presents. He got blown off course, he almost went through the roof of the winter gardens, <laughs> managed to land in the garden, and he got himself together, straightened up his bed and went off, limped off to hand out presents. So he, he <laughs> made go it. Santa, go Santa. Um, how did you, I mean, who did you aim this book at when you were putting it together? Who was it aimed at? Yeah, I mean, partly it's people who sort of maybe have a bit of an interest in New Zealand history but don't really know much, you know, mm. don't, you know, the, the kind of people we'd hope to to entice, to find out a bit more, dig a bit deeper. Um, you know, we're certainly aiming at thinking it'd be a good thing for um, you know school children and yes. people, you know, doing um, doing sort of history, trying to learn about history. Maybe people on uh, sort of in the media wanting to find out what happened, you know, on, on this day. Yeah, you, from a radio <laughs> show, perfect. Well, no, you're right. It is the perfect book for any radio host, isn't it? And a great coffee table book too, because visitors will just pick it up and start flicking through it. New Zealand, in terms of the rest of the world, is quite a young mm. country. 
you know, right now, I guess, we are starting to learn more about where our country is at. Mm. How important are books like this in, the, you know, the whole scheme of yeah. preserving history? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, New Zealand is a young country in terms of, it, in terms of its human settlement, both, both the Maori settlement and European settlement, compared to a lot of societies overseas. But um, what that really means is that a lot of history in New Zealand's happened really fast. So mm. we've packed a lot in, you know, and there's a lot of sort of drama in here. And there's good, there's good things and bad things. And I think we're at a stage now in a, in a feeling a bit more mature about ourselves that we can grapple with some of the, the more difficult aspects mm. of our history. And that's an important part How of it. How long did it take to put together? Well, a lot of this content was already on our NZ History website. So we were, mm. we were sort of reworking some material. We wrote some new entries, probably about six months work to put it together. I, I just opened it up to 11th of August, the Aramoana uh, entering mm, service. Mm. So that's, uh, look at the rough seas there, crikey. I'll yeah. show you that, shall I? It's pretty Cause, interesting. Because I guess now there is a risk that in this digital era, mm. although it's all there, it can disappear. So it's nice to be able to hang mm. on to it, isn't it? Yeah, I think so, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of stuff in here that I think many New Zealanders would have no idea that they yeah. happened in their, in their own country. Okay, cool. And um, did you have to go and liaise with some of the families, or was it all purely research? Well, we did work with the Alexander Turnbull Library for the image research, and they've, they've provided a lot of the images in the, in the book, Brilliant. so you know, it's a great resource. You'd oh. be a fantastic person to have on a pub quiz team, wouldn't you? <laughs> for that New Zealand <laughs> history section, yeah. we're always going, oh, when was that, when was that? You'd just know yeah. everything. Well, I don't know about everything. <laughs> what do you oh, actually, actually, before you go, one more question. Uh, and putting this together, what do you think has been the most exciting year? Oh, interesting. I mean, 1893 is a big one. This the yeah. women's suffrage year. That's a, yep. you know something New Zealanders you know like to celebrate, even though you know it was only a start and kind mm. of a lot more work to do there. Um, you know, one, another one actually was this is, is my birthday. Um, in, uh, 1868 is um, when the first Maori MPs were elected, and this, so next year, 150 years of Maori MPs. Always been kind mm. of controversial. Mm. That one still. You know, right. still an interesting topic. You can check your um, birthday afterwards, Mike. We've run out of time for that one. <laughs> hey, thank you so much for coming yeah. in. A really interesting book. Today in New Zealand History is out now and available from exilepublishing.co.nz and wherever good books are sold. Yeah, congratulations, <laughs> your beautiful book.